Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor. And in this section of the class, we're going to introduce the topic of uh, functions of two and three variables that you may or may not have been exposed to in your other math classes. But we're going to go beyond that, and we're going to talk about functions of two and three variables, and also the concept of the partial derivative, Okay, which is uh, sounds complicated, but if you already know what a derivative is, and, and I know that you all do by, by this point, okay, the concept of a partial derivative is not a big deal at all. So just throw away any anxiety you have on the concept of partial differentiation and uh, you'll see that it's really not not so hard you just have to keep track of a few things okay so the big picture is remember a long time ago unwrap your brain a long time ago when you first were introduced to the concept of a function you were told that there's this thing called a function and it's f of x and you put uh, some some x in there some value we call it the dependent variable okay the in, I'm sorry the independent variable you stick it in there you crank through some math that what the, whatever uh, the function is defined by and out spits a number f of x that's a function of one variable because it's it's x that's the independent variable and uh, then you put one number in there and you get one number out so it's a function of one variable okay well in real life we live in three dimensions, not, not including time. When you start talking about the crazy physics out there, uh, you know, there's the dimension of time. But there's three spatial dimensions, okay? So there's x and y and z. So in real life, uh, rarely do you have functions of only one variable. Usually in real life, you have functions of, of three variables, the x and y and the z, because you're talking about real life space and a lot of times you can simplify problems to only speak of two dimensions functions of x and y and depending on your problem that's useful so we're going to start to talk about functions in three dimensions and at this point uh, two and three dimensions and at this point the course starts to take a turn from the calculus that you've already learned and starts to build that bedrock for you to start doing the calculus in two and three dimensions so it's really important to get a good foundation here with your partial derivatives in the next section we'll have some more details on the partial derivatives and we'll just scoot on down the course and uh, and learning things one step at a time so let's start out with what we all know and go from there okay what is a function of one variable I'm doing this even though I know you know it uh, just because it's good to have a, a good footing when you start out a function of one variable okay I know you all know this but I'm going to draw some, some analogies to this, so, so try not to fast forward here and, and watch what we have to say. Okay, what you were told is that there's this thing called a function, and you define it like this maybe. f of x equals x squared. You stick a number in, you get a number out. You all know this, okay? Now, what we were taught a long time ago is that you can make a, a table of values, right, of x values, and um, you can put these x values in and you'll get f of x values out and we were, we were all taught uh, that we can plot those things and see what they look like okay so if you do that you all know this is just a parabola so it comes down touches the x-axis and goes back up and it goes on forever and ever uh, infinite values of x infinite values of negative x you stick it in there you'll get a corresponding value and you'll draw your plot okay and then when you got into calculus you were taught that these functions you know, as, as they curve like this, any function can de be defined, you can define a derivative of that function, okay? You all know what that is. It's just the slope of a, of a line tangent to this curve, okay? So if I really want to know what the, um, if I really want to know what the derivative is down here, I'm really interested in how fast this function is changing. How fast is it sloping upward? Because obviously up here, it's sloping much very steeply compared with down here. It's not really very steep at all down here. So if I'm interested at the derivative at this point right here, okay, at that exact point, all I do is I draw, graphically speaking, a line tangent, right? And the derivative of this function f of x <clears throat> is uh, equal to the slope of this tangent line, okay? And we were further taught that you could calculate this derivative, which you all know how to do, the derivative of x with respect to x, which is also can be written as uh, df dx, the derivative of the function with respect to the only variable present, okay? And that was just equal to 2x, and we all learned that in your basic calculus, and some really smart people figured that out, and it's not too hard to take derivatives of little polynomials like that. So, just to recap, I mean, I know you all know this, but what you have done here is you've defined another function. You've defined this derivative thing, and, and you've defined it so that any number x you put in here, any number x you were to put into this derivative, you'll calculate the value of the slope of the original curve. So if you wanted to know the slope here, this is at x is equal to 4, let's say, then you would put 4 in here 
uh, four times two is eight, and so you would calculate the slope at this point being eight. So what you have done is you have taken the original function and you've used a mathematical technique to calculate its derivative, which is another function that describes the slope of this curve at any point uh, as a function of x. So at any point x you can put in here and you'll get the value of the slope. Okay. And we already talked about this just a second ago, but if you're interested in it, uh, at, at the slope of this guy at the value of 2, right? Then you just put this in here and you'll get 2 times 2 and that will be 4. So you've, you've calculated this derivative and you've done that. What we're going to do is we're going to use this, this, um, this as a baseline, so to speak, to talk about more complicated functions, okay? So let me ask you this. Uh, let's say we're going to talk about a function of two variables. So we're not going to talk about a function of x. We're going to talk about a function of x and a function of x and y. Now, the first thing you 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 want to know, right, when you when you start opening your brain up a little bit to new to new ideas, is why would you ever want to do that? Why am I not just perfectly happy with my functions of x? Why do I need functions?